This is episode four of our surfboard project, and we're gonna get right into it, starting back with our Stuart longboard. And this is what it looks like after we've done our patchwork um, using that plastic technique. We have a bunch of repairs throughout the board with little patches of fiberglass on them. And one thing we wanted to look at is experiment with how a repair looked with or without the plastic. So because um, obviously plastic is like waste, it's going to go in the trash. So is it really all that worth it? And so this is a repair that um, doesn't have the plastic and you can't really tell, but there's a really defined ridge um, on the perimeter of the fiberglass. And this is going to make it challenging to blend this in. Whereas if you go say to the front of the board, we put glass on this entire section. There's a piece of glass going all the way back to about here. And you almost can't even see it and you can almost not even feel it because of the plastic. So that's really the, the, the great thing about the plastic technique is that it helps really set that transition up for success early on. Whereas we're gonna have to work a little bit harder um, to do the rest of these. So the plan of attack for this is um, we're not even gonna really sand it. Like you can get you can get yourself really lost in sanding and applying, sanding and applying. We're gonna try not to do that. We'll give it a, a very brief sand just to just to roughen up the surface, just to make sure everything sticks. But it's gonna be a really like quick one. Um, and then we're going to get our epoxy that we use in almost all of our steps, and we're gonna mix it with a thing called micro balloons. And micro balloons are a type of filler similar to like the filler we used in the previous steps um, but they they're a specific type of filler that sands really really fine and really well and it's gonna it's almost behaves like a fairing compound and we're gonna paint the um, micro balloons all around the repair and we're gonna put just a thin layer not like a lot a thin layer all the way over the the repair and then when that cures we're gonna come through with, with the sandpaper and really ferret clean and that'll hopefully be our last step before paint um, the trick with all this is to try to minimize sanding, putting on, sanding, putting on. People that work with boats and boards and stuff, you can, um, you can waste a lot of time and a lot of materials putting resin on and then sanding it all off and then putting it back on and sanding it all off. So sometimes less is more and that's sort of what we're going for with this. All right, we're just prepping our board here for the last little bit of fairing filler. And one little tip with uh, cleaning a board before you do work on it, getting all the sanding residue off, is to stroke with denatured alcohol in one one direction. And I forget where I learned it, but someone was telling me if you if you go back and forth, you're just basically smearing all the all the powder and all the stuff you sanded off all over the board. So micro balloons, they also call them micro spheres. It's a type of filler um, that you can put in epoxy, just like we used. The high density filler before this is a, a very very fine powder i think they actually are they may not be like microscopic spheres um, and when you put it in it creates a consistency that's almost like um probably elmer's glue and uh, so it's very runny and so you need a, a paintbrush to apply it and how we're going to apply it is we're just going to we're going to paint it on over our repairs it's going to put like a nice film, a nice thick film over our repairs, specifically focusing on the edge, right? The edge is, we wanna fill in that edge with a little bit of this stuff. And this is really a, a thin film. So if you have lots of big bumps in your glass job, you know, it's not gonna really work. You're gonna to have to sand those out first. This is sort of like a final step to to fill in the smallest of, of things. But it's really, it sands really well and it wets out really nice and it'll leave this, this fiberglass repair feeling smooth. You won't even know it's there. We finally got to the final step before paint for the uh, Stuart Lombard and it's a pretty, uh, pretty rewarding part of the job. Um, we're gonna be polishing off our micro balloon. So, if you go up here just to see what we were trying to accomplish, you can kind of see our fiberglass patches in here. But if I run my hand over this, I really can't feel that seam. And that's what the goal is. When we polish this down, you're not going to be able to feel or really even um, notice the change in shape caused by the patches because you don't want your board all lumpy. And when we paint over this and you look down the board, you're really not going to notice 
um, all the repairs we did. So that's what we're what we're going for. Um, probably hit this with about not not too gritty, maybe like 120, maybe even uh, maybe even higher than that, and uh, shouldn't take long. And we're just going to give a board, the board a nice, good polish. And when we're done, hopefully, if we've done our job right, um, the board will be ready for, for paint. And then we're done. After about an hour of sanding, starting with 120 and getting all the way up to 320, um, the board is ready for paint. Um, it came, the sanding came out really good. You can't tell, but this is super smooth. You can't feel any, any transitions to the glass. You don't even, if you close your eyes, you wouldn't even know it was there. And when we paint the board, all these repairs will completely disappear. Um, let's see if I can flip to the rails as well. And there's our backside of our big repair back there. So super exciting step, a very satisfying step. Um, and now it's time to, to paint the board. And we're gonna be painting this board in an unconventional way, in a way I've never tried before. We're actually gonna try to use a coat of epoxy and do like a a hot coat of epoxy with pigment um, so that the, the paint or the color is actually in the epoxy. Um, and then that extra layer of epoxy is also going to just give um, the board a little bit better of a, of a coat. And uh, you could surf the board right now as it is. You don't need to paint it, but um, it does look a little, little beat. The pressure is on. It is time to paint the fiberglass board and we're going to do it using a method we've never tried before. So we asked our friends at Jamestown Distributors, how can we add color to a, a gloss coat of resin? Because I didn't want to just paint this board um, with paint because I found that sometimes paint can just chip off over time and it doesn't really seem like a good long-term solution. And they turned us on to this stuff uh, it's called black diamond pigment powder. And apparently you just put a little bit of this pigment into your, into your resin and it turns it into a really funky, bright, fun color. What we don't know is what the opacity of this is. So if we paint over you know, the board with colors and repairs, are we gonna be able to see it underneath? How many coats do we have to put on? Questions we don't know. If you look in here, what we've noticed is it seems like this is, it's not super high opacity. So we're, we're gonna put a test run down and just see what it looks like. We think you're going to be able to see a lot underneath it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that didn't do so anything. That's not going to work. That didn't Let's... do anything. Okay, we've added some blue, and we're going to test the opacity with a lot of color and see if it's any better. All right, so like that looks cool. What happens when you roll it out? Yeah, it just disappears. We're going to just go full Jackson Pollock and see what happens when we do this. I think the issue has to do with like having it be thick versus thin. See up top? See how it's running thinner? Yeah. How it... That did not go as planned. But we want to show it to you because Sometimes things don't work, and we got to be fair. We got to show you when they don't work. So our hope was we were going to add that color pigment to the epoxy, and it was going to turn it like a super bright, fun, crazy color, and then we were going to paint that onto the board, and it was going to look like a brand new board. But what it really did is just basically resulted in a completely clear um, gloss coat over the board, which, you know, it's not... That's not a bad thing, but it was not what we were going for. The issue with this stuff, and I'm not trying to knock it, I think it's a, a really cool product for the right application, um, is that it doesn't really provide um, the right opacity when it's a thin layer, right? So when you see people pouring buckets of resin on boards or on, on they use this on tabletops and stuff to get this really funky, swirly look, um, the only reason you're not seeing through it is because it's a really thick layer of it. And we're not willing to put such a thick layer of epoxy over this whole board or it's going to weigh like 40 pounds. So we want something that will give us the color that we need um, on a thin layer. And that might, we might be forced to use paint. I'm not sure. We're going to have to go back to the drawing board. Fiona's checking 
on the internet to make sure that we didn't use too little pigment. I don't, we put a lot in there and it still just was super clear. So we're gonna go back to the drawing board and try to come up with another solution while this uh, unplanned gloss coat cures. Action. Our first painting attempt didn't work, um, but we have a new idea that we're pretty excited about. Uh, what we're gonna try to do um, is paint the boat with leftover boat paint that we had from our canoe trip two years, two years ago? Two years ago. Uh, so for those that don't remember, we built some canoes with CLC boats, took them down the intercoastal, and we have some old rusty total boat paint. And we figure if boat paint is good enough for a boat, why it should probably be good enough for a board. And it should be able to really cover all this up. And we're gonna just go for it. We're gonna paint the boat. We decided seafoam green is gonna be the color. And uh, let's give it a go. What do you think, you nervous? Is it no, gonna work? No, let's do it. Is it gonna work? <laughs> Am I going to be out here all night? Like, Do this part first. I'm curious how the front's going to... If it's going to like cover Where? up front here. See if we get the coverage we need. You ready? Oh, it's going to cover. Yeah, we're going to have the coverage we need. It's totally going to work. So we put our first coat of paint on the board last night. It was a little dark, maybe a little difficult to see, but here we are in the glory of the sunlight. Seafoam green. Looks so good. We're so excited. Um, it looks epic. Uh, the board can't wait to, to put the, the top coat on. We're going to do that now. And uh, just a, it's a life lesson. You, it's always good to keep your paint. I mean, that, that, can of paint we had was over two years old and uh, honestly I never really thought I was going to use it but here it comes into good use so super stoked that I kept that stuff and um, time to paint the top side let it dry and then this board is done. So here we are on the top side and because we had put that failed uh, attempt of epoxy with pigment on there we have basically like a gloss coat now on here and before I paint this I want to just um, come in with the sander and scuff it up a little bit just to make sure that our uh, paint sticks to it nice and clear. 